Okay, so today we're going to talk about an alternate way of finding volumes of solids, and this is by cylindrical shells. So um, basically, let's just kind of start off with why sh the shell method is important at times. So uh, we may at times have difficulty finding the volume of a solid through the washer method. So for example, um, take for instance the curve y equals to 2x squared minus x cubed rotated about the y-axis. So in fact I only really care about um, this function let's just say along with the x-axis like this is sealed off with respect to the x-axis which if you think about it if I were to factor out an x squared I get the x-intercepts are 0 and 2, so from 0 and 2, it looks something like this. And if I grab this and if I rotate it about the y-axis, I get this shape. Okay, now here's the problem. When I take a cross-sectional area, what do you notice? The area of the big circle and the area of the small circle, both radii, go to the same curve. So what we notice is we're having difficulty finding this area because how could I say the radius of this small circle, which is clearly smaller than the radius of the big circle, but I'm using the same curve. So it's more, much more difficult to manipulate this. And we notice that we will instead we will instead use the method of cylindrical shells. So in other words, what I'm going to do is instead of taking cross-sectional areas, we're going to insert kind of a shell is like a, a, a cylinder, but the inside is hollow. So it's kind of like something like this. And I'm going to keep inserting. Now, I know this is going to look messy, but I keep inserting a bunch of shells where I capture the whole kind of thing. So what we're going to do is instead of focusing on inserting shell after shell after shell, and of course, we could see that these shells are going to approximate the volume, let's kind of focus on a singular shell. So what we could say is, look, notice that. a cylindrical shell has two radii. Okay, and um, we're basically saying if I have a shell that looks like this, And of course, this inside part is hollow, right? So notice how it has two radii. We could call the smaller circles, or the smaller circle R1, and then we'll call the larger circle R2. And then this right here, that's our delta R, which is the thickness, right? That's the change of radius. And then we'll call R, let's call that the midpoint, right? So or in, uh, let's call R the distance that's halfway between R1 and R2. That, so that's that length. So we could say, look, I want to find the volume of this shell. And of course, the hollow part we don't want. So we could say, look, notice that the volume of the shell is 
v2 minus v1, okay, which the vol uh, when these are going to be the cylinders, right? So v2 is the volume of the large cylinder, and then v1 is the volume of the hollow cylinder. So if I take the difference, I just get what's what I'm left with, which would be what? What is the volume? It's pi sub r2 squared h minus pi sub r1 squared h, right? So pi r squared h is the volume of a cylinder, so this would give me the volume of the shell, which the hollow part is being taken away. So, so let's simplify this because something nice is going to happen here. So what do they have in common? I could factor out a pi, so that gives me pi times r sub 2 squared h minus r sub 1 squared h. And then also you notice, wait a minute, I could factor out the h as well. So if I factor out the h, I get r sub 2 squared minus r sub 1 squared times h. Now, here's something really cool is about to happen right now. So what we notice is, wait a minute, these are a difference of squares. So what I could do is I could factor that. So this becomes pi times r sub 2 minus r sub 1 times r sub 2 plus r sub 1 h. Now look at what this is. Let's take a minute here is, look, coming back to this, r is what? The midpoint between r1 and r2. So what I could say is, look, r by definition is r sub 1 plus r sub 2 divided by 2, right? Because you take the sum of these two and then to go midway, you cut it in half. Now look, doesn't this almost have the, this look almost like r? So here's what we could do. We could actually use a trick. We could say, look, this is the same thing as pi times r sub 2 minus r sub 1. I could say r sub 2 plus r sub 1 over 2. So I'm dividing this by 2. Now if I'm dividing by 2, I'll add an extra 2 in here. So this 2 and that 2 counteract each other. So this is in fact the same thing as that. Now why do I care about this? Because now I could change this to r. So I have a single radius. And then what's delta r? Isn't delta r um, the thickness, which would be r2 minus r1. So delta r it becomes r sub 2 minus r sub 1. Look at how nice this is. So all of this now changes to what? It becomes 2 pi r h delta r, which what do we notice? This is the volume of a single shell. Now, why do we like this? Because what does this say? All we need is the height of the shell, the radius of the shell, and then delta r is the thickness of the shell. And you could see that once we talk about integrals, we're slicing this up infinitely many times. And then the delta r just becomes our dr, or it becomes kind of negligible. So what we notice is a single shell to find the volume of it. So just to kind of uh, show you an idea, if this is a shell with almost, if I do this, with almost no thickness, then what you notice is the volume of this just becomes the surface area or just becomes the 2 pi r h, which basically is what we're looking at. And the delta r kind of zeroes out. So with that said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, now let's go back to the original picture. So we're going to say, look, now consider... the following solid rotated about the y-axis. So if I gave you a solid that looks like this, if I have something like this and I rotate this about the y-axis, I get kind of like this shape right here. Okay, so of course that this has some. Okay, so what am I doing? And of course this solid was created from A to B, right? It was this solid and I rotated it and I got this, or this uh, region was rotated and I got that solid. And of course this part is hollow. So then what we have is the following. If we divide the interval 
starting from A, go on to B, into N subintervals, which would be X sub I minus 1 to X sub I. So what we're doing is, as always, we're dividing this up into N subintervals um, of equal width. delta x and we let x sub i bar be the midpoint of the i subinterval. So here's kind of what we're doing. Going back to our shell, we're saying, look, here's our shell, and this shell is created where this is my x sub i minus 1th value, and this is the x sub i x value, and then what are we calling here? We have this, that length, as x sub i bar, and the height, and remember, see, how am I going to find the height? Well, this function is going to be given to us, so to find the height of the shell, this is just going to be f of x sub i bar. So then how would I find the volume of this? Using the equation that we came up with, like if I go back to this right here, what do I need? I need 2 pi r, the radius, the height, and delta r. So using that, we could say that, look, notice how. the volume of this shell is v equals to 2 pi the radius now becomes this x sub i bar x sub i bar the height becomes the f of x sub i bar delta x and that's the volume of the i subintervals shell. Now remember, we're inserting a finite number of shells. Eventually, I want to insert infinitely many shells. But what we have is that this is the i subintervals. So if we create a finite number of shells, so remember, if I, if I come back to this right here, what am I doing? I'm creating a bunch of shells. And these shells are wrapping around. And I'm creating shell after shell after shell. And I'm adding all these shells up. And then the volume of all those shells added up together gives me an approximate vo uh, volume. So if we add the number of shells, then the volume can be approximated let's get out of space here can be approximated by v is approximated by summation from i equals 1 to n of all of my the volume of the shells which we said is the same thing as i equals 1 to n of 2 pi x sub i bar f of x sub i bar delta x. Okay, so that's this is approximated. So um, basically, just to kind of visually uh, show you what's going on, which I've, I've tried kind of a few times, and my drawing is not the greatest, but... Let me try to make it a little larger, and then hopefully this will make more sense, is like this. If I have this, what I'm doing is I'm generating a shell starting from here, right? So I'm using the midpoint, I'm finding the height, and then I'm swinging around, uh, it around. Now, what's nice is the formula takes care of all of this, so we have that. That's our first shell. And then the second shell, we would say, is right here. And then I swing that over, I get my second shell, which then 
gives me the second shell. And then the third shell would be the midpoint. And then I'd go across, make my third shell. And so hopefully you see what's going on. So this is an approximation. So what we could say is, look, in fact, as the number of partitions increase, uh, we get a better estimate of volume. So, thus, if we want to get the exact volume, we would say the volume equals to i equals 1 to infinity, which is 2 pi x sub i bar, f of x sub i bar delta x. That's the same thing as the integral. Remember, if I send it to infinity, that's the integral from a to b of... 2 pi x f of x dx. Now let me make a couple of comments here. See over here we call this x sub i bar, which was the midpoint of the sub the i sub interval. Over here, the midpoint became just x. How come? Because if I divide this up infinitely many parts, think of it this way. If this is x sub i minus 1 and this is x sub i, here's x sub i bar. But if I divide this infinitely many times, what happens to this interval? This interval collapses kind of, or it becomes so small, where what we notice is that the x sub i minus 1 and x sub i and x sub i bar, they're all relatively the same x value. So what we're saying is, look, if I divide this infinitely many times, the radius of the shell that I'm looking at is basically the x value that I'm at. And we want to generalize it because, remember, I want all the shells. And then what do I do? Whatever this x value is, I also use the function because you'll notice that the shell is created, the height is created going up to the function. So then you plug that x value into the function to find the height. So what I'm saying is, as this thickness becomes negligible or it becomes so small, you'd say that the radius of the shell is just whatever x value you're at. And in the height, you just plug that x value into the function and you get the height. So technically speaking, all we really need of this shell to find the volume is the radius of the shell, of a generic shell, and the height. And once we have that, then we can just integrate this and that will give us the volume using the sh cylindrical shells method. So before we do some examples, let's define this officially and then I'll do three examples and that will basically do it. So the volume of a solid obtained by rotating about the y-axis the region under the curve y equals to f of x from a to b is v equals to a to b 2 pi x f of x dx. Now look, for this case, what we notice is that whenever you rotate a solid about the y-axis, which is kind of like what this is looking like, your shells are standing up. If your shells are standing up, then everything has to be in terms of x. Okay, so keep that in mind. If your shells are standing up or if they're perpendicular to the x-axis, they have to be with respect, everything has to be in terms of with respect to x. Now, what if I rotate the other way? If my shells are sideways, then you're doing the same thing, except now everything has to be with respect to y. So we can just put that in kind of parentheses here. So if we rotate about the x-axis, or in other words, if we're rotating it sideways, my shells are going to be sideways, and so that means everything has to be in terms of y. So v equals a to b. Now look, this is lower upper limits have to be with respect to y, and it'll be 2 pi y f of y 
dy. Okay, so with that said, let's actually go, and, and so one comment I want to make is, when you draw a generic shell, what we really care about is what? The radius of the shell and the height. Once you find the radius and the height of the shell, you're pretty much done. There's nothing to worry about because then everything else could be just calculated through the integrals and by the definition that we set forth. So let's look at our first example. We'll say, fine. The volume that is bounded by y equals to 2x squared minus x cubed and y equals 0 rotated about the y-axis. So if you think about it, this is the problem that we just talked about earlier on. So we know that the graph of this guy um, y equals 0 is the x-axis, and then from uh, and 2x squared minus x cubed, if you remember, looked like this. And this was 2, this was 0, and so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing this guy and I'm rotating it about the y-axis, which gives us this shape. Okay. Now, we talked about why the cross-sectional areas won't work, but wh what I'm really doing is I'm going to put a generic shell. So and since my shells are going to be standing up, I'm going to work in terms of x. So I'm going to say, look, my shell, one of my shells, this is a generic shell, looks something like this. Okay, so what do I need to find of this shell? I need to find its radius, which, by the way, I've given this guy thickness, but in reality, remember, it has no thickness. So the radius of my shell starts where? From the center of the circle, and it goes down. And so the radius, notice how, is just going to be whatever my x value is. Okay, so how nice is that? That's the radius. And then what's the height of the shell going to be? Notice the height of this shell starts where? From the x-axis and ends on the curve, which means the height is, and it has to be in terms of x, which this already is. So the height is 2x squared minus x cubed. So once I've gener uh, identified a generic shell's radius and height, now I'm ready to solve this problem. And notice how the shell method, look at how easy this is. I mean, we couldn't solve this using the washer method, but the shell method works so nice and easy because this just becomes the volume will be 2 pi, the integral. Now remember, don't worry about this half because when the shell is rotated, it takes care of this half. So where do my shells start? My shells start from 0 to 2. Don't say that your shells start from negative 2 to 2 because, see, Whatever this half of the shell is, once it wraps around, it takes care of that side for me. So I really care about the shells that start from 0 and go to 2, and then the other half is automatically taken care of. So it'll be from 0 to 2, um, and the radius, which is x, times the height, which is 2x squared minus x cubed dx. So there you have it. Let's simplify this and solve it, and that'll take care of this. So it'll be 2x cubed minus x to the fourth dx. So now I could integrate this, which gives me 1 half x to the fourth minus 1 fifth x to the fifth from 0 to 2. And when you plug in 2, I'll just give you the answer here. So from this point on, I'm sure you guys are pretty good with it. You should get 16 over 5. Pi. Okay, so spend some time just to make, uh, simplify this, but that's what you should get, okay? The key here is using the shell method. So hopefully this is actually not that bad, um, but let's do a couple more examples. So for example two, we're going to say, um, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating about the y-axis and we want the region between 
y equals x and y equals x squared. Okay, so let's do this. If I were to, and once again, the picture is going to be most important. So y equals x looks like this, and y equals x squared looks like that, and they intersect each other at 0 and 1. So if I rotate this about the y-axis, I get this shape. Okay, so now remember, my shells, since I'm rotating this way, my shells are going to be standing up. So if I were to draw a generic shell, which we can call this x, and so here's my shell, okay, and so what do I need to find here of this shell? I need to find the radius, which once again, remember, although I've drawn that this has thickness, we know it has no thickness, so the radius will be just whatever x value this is because it's from the y-axis to this, so that's x, so the radius is x, and then the height of this shell, now look at how this height is different, how is this height found? It's actually starts from the top curve and it ends at the bottom curve. So the height of this, that height right there, would be x minus x squared. So once we've identified the height and the radius, now we're good to go. So this will be what? The integral from 0 to 1. Don't, let's not forget the 2 pi, um, because remember the 2 pi is always in there with the shell method. Um, it'll be the radius times the height dx, which now we could easily simplify this and go with this. So it'll be what? The integral from 0 to 1, x squared minus x cubed dx, which becomes 2 pi, 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth from 0 to 1, and this becomes 2 pi. If I plug in the 1, I get 1 third minus 1 fourth which then this simplifies to pi over 2. So the volume was pi over 2. And if you recall, we actually did the same problem last section with the washer method, and we did get pi over 2 as well. So here's basically the same thing we solved, just using the shell method instead of the washer method. So the last example I want to do is find the volume, oh sorry, and for that last problem is not pi over 2, it's actually pi over 6. Okay, so sorry, if you simplify this is pi over 6. The next example's answer is actually going to be pi over 2, so I just mixed up the two solutions, okay? So we'll, we'll say find the volume obtained by rotating the region y equals to the square root of x about the x-axis from 0 to 1. Okay, so now they're telling us, look, the region that we're interested in it starts from x equals 0 and ends at 1, so rad x looks like this, so we close it up, and this is what we have, and I'm rotating this about the x-axis. So if I rotate that about the x-axis, now what we notice is actually our shells are going to be sideways. So if I were to draw a shell, it would look like this. So that's a shell. And so now that my shell is sideways, what do I care about? I'm going to call this y. So what I care about is the radius, which once again, the radius is just y. Now I need to find the height. And the height, everything needs to be in terms of y since I'm moving sideways. So this is actually now going to be, we're better off thinking of this as x equals to y squared. So what do I notice? How would I find this height? This is 1, and if I go to the curve, that's y squared, so the height right there is actually going to be what? 1 minus y squared, okay? So remember, the whole thing is 1. This amount, which I don't want, 
is y squared. So I want 1 minus y squared, which would then give me the height of this shell. So once we have that, now remember, now we're going in terms of y values. So my shells start from where? Start from y equals 0 and go up to y equals 1. Remember, although this x values are 0 and 1, since my shells are sideways, I care about the y values. Now remember, this other side is wrapped around by this shell, so I shouldn't go from negative 1 to 1. I go from 0 to 1 because half of this shell takes care of the other half. So the volume for this guy would be 2 pi integral from 0 to 1. Remember, these are my y values. And then it'll be y times 1 minus y squared dy, which that becomes 2 pi integral from 0 to 1, y minus y cubed dy. And then now I could integrate this, which is 2 pi 1 half y squared minus 1 third y cubed from 0 to 1 which this gives me what? It'll be 2 pi times 1 half. Oh, and there's a mistake here. This should be y cubed, right? So when I find antiderivative, this should be y 1 fourth y to the fourth, okay? Because when I distributed this y, this should be y minus y cubed. So this would be what? 1 half minus 1 fourth, which this becomes now pi over 2. Okay, so there you have it. So this is basically finding volume using the shell method, which, um, you know, there are different perspectives. Um, it's good to know both methods because sometimes both methods will work, but one will be much quicker than the other. So I can't say that, hey, I prefer the shell over the washer because there are times where I prefer the washer. There's other times where I prefer the shell. But it's good to have more options. And so the more options you have, um, the better off you'll be in solving certain problems. Okay, so this takes care of the shell method. And so make sure to ask me any questions if you have any.